What is up heroes, this is Minite Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, I did a lot of talking, and we finally made our way to this garden. This very beautiful looking garden, this very quickly moving garden, that is going to be our next escape room. And I'm very excited to tackle it. I do want to say, I haven't played the game for about a week at this point. I was had recorded, I had a bunch, and really enjoyed it. Had a little bit of a break with some stuff I was tending to in real life, which was also enjoyable, don't worry. And I'm excited to get back. I want to say also thank you so much for all of your comments, especially those of you who have made a note to say that you really enjoy hearing all of my analysis, my internal thoughts, and, and that that's arguably the highlight of this Let's Play. That actually, um, it's really, really heartwarming, and I appreciate that. And I'm so glad to know that so many of you are enjoying everything so far, and are looking forward to what is to come. So. With that said, let's hop into our garden. We're going to take what we learned from the very first puzzle and say, okay, there might be a clue that we use in one context, but I cannot make the assumption that that means that clue is used up. It could be used again when pertinent to the hidden file. And that is something that is probably going to be the blue password, right? That I should look for before inputting the, the escape password. So, okay, we've got the entirety of this place to look. Oh, and I guess here we have the safe right off the bat, right? This is a safe, right? It looks like one at least. Oh, that's right, we're with Alice. <laughs> Alice low tier. There was a safe that looked like this in the crew quarters, too. Let's see if we can get it open. Nah, I mean, we don't have anything for it at the moment. Darn it. Just don't get it. I don't know why I don't have the answer less than one minute into solving the puzzle. What is this? There's a circular indentation in this panel. Anybody play any Battle Network fans? Kind of reminds me of Land's logo. And there are two fan-shaped holes inside it. Look carefully. Those fans are connected. It looks like a butterfly. Huh? There's a hole in the middle of the panel that looks like a butterfly. Oh, that's what they're saying looks like a butterfly. Okay, so obviously need to put something there. Anything in these vines? No, I don't think so. Okay. Can I go over this way? No, I mean, obviously there was that arrow on the ground. Don't worry, I see it. But I'm curious about what we see. What we have immediately available to us. There's a red spot of mushroom growing in the shadow of this tree. Don't eat it, Sigma. Or I guess maybe do eat it, and instead we'll turn into Super Sigma. There's a red spot of mushroom. Oh, I wanted to click on the tree. Um, we'll, we'll probably be able to remove that mushroom at some point with a cutting appliance. But I guess for the time being, we'll, we'll head over this way. We're going to have to cross the water to get over there. Please be careful. If you slip, you could fall into the stream. Clicking the blue arrow will move you from the current area to an adjacent one. Okay, we've got these buttons here. There are three red buttons on the panel. I pushed them, but nothing happened. Do you think they're broken? Maybe you just need to press them in a specific order. Okay, well, I mean, we could brute force this. There are only, what, six combinations? Or six orders? Uh, I know combinations is a very specific word we shouldn't use there. Um, let's see here. We've got a bench with... What is this? A metal rod. It looks like a lever of some sort that we can attach to something, right? A metal shaft. The tip has an octog octagonal hole. It looks kind of like a wrench. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. Anything else on the bench? Aren't you guys tired? Why don't we rest on this bench for a while? The water from the waterfall splashes all over it, though. If we sit here, won't um, our butts get wet? Darn it. I've been made. <laughs> That's, um, that would be pretty uncomfortable. But it's actually funny thinking about resting on benches. I was just playing Hollow Knight with Lizzie, uh, my girlfriend, and we were having a good time with that. But, oh, we're probably going to need to get rid of this stream so we can access what's behind it. Classic RPG move. What's hidden behind the waterfall. Wow, they even made a waterfall. Hold on. Doesn't it look like there's something built into the rock wall behind the waterfall? Yeah, the walkway goes under it, doesn't it? I wonder what's back there. So we'll probably need to press the buttons in a particular order in order to get rid of that stream, if I had to guess. Got ourselves a shovel. Any clues on it? A steel-colored shovel. Steel-colored shovel. <laughs> it's not rusty at all. Maybe keeping it in the shed kept it from rusting. It's had to be for digging stuff up. I can't think of any other use for it. So maybe we'll find a map at some point that's going to indicate where we can dig things up with that shovel. Oops, no, I wanted to rotate. Alright, anything else of interest down here? Maybe in this stream area? What a nice stream. It's 
too bad there aren't any fish. Speaking of streams, I may actually stream uh, myself sometime soon. Not something related to Virtue's Last Reward, probably Mega Man or, or something else, but but we'll see. It's something I'd like to do a little bit before my life gets crazy uh, chaotic. Okay, so we've got a pretty important picture here, right? There are three sort of like chests. Ah, yes. So it looks like these are icons on the map for, or these are, you know, images of different things we can find in this area. And it's showing that beneath each of them, there is a particular treasure that we can find. Underneath that red mushroom, for example, there's going to be the, the white or silver treasure, right? Bird's eye view of the garden. It's kind of like a map. What's that on the right? It looks like a box. I think it's a treasure chest. It's connected to the drawing above it, see? I do see. Alright, let's figure this out. This is the treasure chest, right? And this is an island? There aren't any island in here, though. Aren't any island. <laughs> there's something green growing on the top. It's probably like moss of some sort. Yeah, but there's grass everywhere in here. Maybe it's something else. Well, let's look for something with green on the top. And then, yeah, so we can take a look. Let's briefly take a look at the map, though. So we walked in in that top left corner area. We saw the tree where there's the red mushroom. We can see that there is the, the stream, and we're not able to see what's behind the stream, unfortunately. Um, or behind the waterfall, that is. There's a park-like area in the middle. I think that's where we are right now. So we still got a decent amount to explore. Um, anyways. So, we'll head on out and see what we can find. Yeah, we're in that middle area. So there's a potted plant here. Let's take a look at that. It's just a flower pot. There's nothing special about it at all. Wait! <laughs> Turns out there is. Don't people usually hide their house keys under a flower pot or in the mailbox? They do? Just trust me, that's absolutely true. I'm sure there's something under there. Well, certainly didn't hurt to take a look. So the silver key. So it's good to know that we're going to need to find three treasure chests using those landmarks. We're also going to need to have the appropriate keys in order to open them. Makes sense. A large Japanese Zelkova tree. Okay. And then what do we have in this garden area here? What's on the ground? Is that a pepper? Hey, it's a paprika. Nope, looks like I was wrong. No, that's a pepper. Oh, no, I was right. Yes, Luna to the rescue. <laughs> Probably a bell pepper. Paprika is what you call the spice you make from them. Oh, huh. Why is it split in half? I'm not sure. Wait, is there something in there? Oh, yeah. Let me take a look. What is that, a coin? A yellow coin. Huh. I didn't think a colored coin would be made of metal. You can get lots of different colored coins by using different alloys. I saw a 5 cent coin made from brass once, and a 10 cent coin made from bronze. I've seen people using a metal detector to search for coins on those shows where they hunt for treasure. Yeah, I guess if coins are metal, that would make sense. Anything in this grass? No? Alright, well, anything left? A pepper that's been split in half. This is where I found the yellow coin. The coin was inside this pepper, right? Maybe there are things in the other vegetables, too. Yeah, that was my thought as well. Can we take the pepper? I feel like that'd be a little bit, a little bit of sustenance, you know? <laughs> Reduce the starvation threat just a little bit. Do you think there might be coins in these tomatoes, too? Maybe. There are an awful lot of them, and they all look the same. I only had a way to tell which tomato had a coin in it, aka a metal detector of some sort. Looks like someone's planted some onions here. Think there might be a coin in one of them? Maybe. I don't know. How can we figure out which one of these onions has the coin in it? Cucumber. Cucumber. Oh, I actually, I like cucumber a lot. These cucumbers are so long. Do you think there might be a coin in one of them? Maybe we should just go through one by one and bite into them. <laughs> That's not a good idea. There's got to be something we could use to make it easier. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it, game. Okay, so I don't think there's much we can do there at the moment. I am going to switch to the... I think the the large shovel for now, just in case we can use it. Briefly taking a look around, is this? I think this might be that stone with the moss on top. What is that? Maybe I should go take a closer look. It doesn't look perfect, but it could be the case. Let's take a look. All right, let's try digging here. Hey, we got the box with the bronze lid. Lovely. Hey, it's a box with a copper lid. Looks like it's locked. 
bronze, copper. Similar colors, but I, I just remember that you need copper to make bronze. <laughs> Shout out to, to RuneScape. Oh man, what a throwback. Alright, so let's explore this area here. Clearly got something going on over there. We got another bench. Not gonna get ourselves wet sitting on this one though. <laughs> Looks like there's just enough room for two on this bench. Why are you looking at me? Because we certainly don't want to sit next to Alice. <laughs> oh, no reason. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I guess, what's in here? That is certainly an interesting design. At large, you know, there's a, a large sun-like thing, but then it also looks like something with a mouth and, you know, sharp teeth. It looks like there's some sort of tile mosaic on the bottom of the pond. A lion. Yeah. It looks like a lion, alright. Is there anything we can do with it? I guess not for now. Let's grab this. What is this? A metal detector. Oh! I thought it was gonna be like some sort of net. Kinda looks like a, like a Swiffer, but not that I've ever really used a metal detector. This is a metal detector. Yeah, it's pretty much what it says on the tin. You use it to detect metal. What sort of range do you think it has? It depends on the amount of metal. Large objects can be detected even if they're several meters underground. That's amazing, but what about small things like a ring or a screw? Yeah, unfortunately sometimes you can't find that sort of thing, even if it's only a few centimeters underground. Oh. So you need to be pretty close to it for the metal detector to work, then. Basically telling us we need to be pretty particular about it. What does this say? What is that? Tu tui ego, or ego eris? I think that's Latin. This is... It looks like a tombstone. So the people buried here are Mr. Tufui. Oh, is that a... Uh... It's an F. And Mrs. Ego Eris. What? Well, that's what it says. Tufui. Ego er Eris. I'm just trying to remember from, like, my... My lingering Spanish knowledge. It sounds like, like, you went. I don't know what the ego would stand for, but... That's an epitaph. Something that they feel represents them, or just a phrase they liked. What does it mean? Beats me. Any ideas, Luna? It looks like it's Latin, but I don't know what it means either. Hmm. Did you see this? It looks like there's a keyhole down here near the bottom. You're right. Alright, well, I mean, we'll try the silver key. I would imagine the silver key is designed for the, uh, <laughs> the silver chest, but we'll give it a go. Let's see if the key I've got works. Nope, no luck. I don't think this is this key is for this keyhole. Yeah, I mean, somebody, if we don't already find out what it means by the end of the puzzle, somebody please let me know in the comments what that means. It's like, probably something like, you went and you were, or something like that. But anyways, this is the thing for our third, I think the gold chest, right? A white flower with green leaves. It's a skunk cabbage. The white flower part is actually a leaf. Oh, really? That's neat. There's a bunch of skunk cabbage here. Can I... Oh, I have to uh, switch my tool. To the shovel! I need to play Shovel Knight. I really like platformers. I uh, like Mega Man and stuff. So it's, it's shocking that I haven't played it yet, but... You're gonna dig up the skunk cabbage? Poor thing, it's never done anything to you. Don't worry, I'll replant it when we're done. Alright, so we got the box with the gold lid. Nice. Anything out here in the in the brush? Is that a shovel? Is that a Japanese alcova? They can grow to over 20 meters, so this one is probably still young. Does that mean it'll break through the ceiling eventually? Then maybe we can use it to escape after many, many years. Hey, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, I know, because it's idiotic in that look she's giving us. So much sass. Okay, um, let's try to move around here. We've got the scales there. Anything else? No. Okay, so let's take a look at these scales. Oh! So this is a bunch of stuff. So we got a piece of metal. Obviously it has that octagonal surface. So, oh, and then obviously you can see that's sort of the butterfly contraption. So we'll combine this with this piece here. Not this piece. This piece, the metal rod. Now we have a lever handle. Lovely. We also have a knife here, a metal scale. There's a plate on each side. On the right plate, a gold key, which is helpful for 
you know, our uh, gold box. We have a torn scrap of paper. Okay, probably a map of some sort. And on the left plate, a small knife. What could we use the knife for? I don't really know at the moment, but either way, I think we're making good progress, right? Because now we can go back to these plants and we can use the metal detector to see what they're hiding. Oh, the metal detector seems to be responding to this tomato. All right, grab it. Okay. Can we open it? Did it react to any of the others? No, just this one. Here you go. Okay, freshly picked tomato. We will combine that with our knife to get a red coin, which actually looks very similar to a tomato slice. Um, aren't the coins made of metal? You've got the perfect way to find them, then, don't you? Yep, I just realized I needed to switch my item again. So there were the tomatoes, there are the onions. Oh, this one, it's reacting to this onion. All right, let's dig it up. This was the only one that got a reaction, right? Freshly excavated onion. I feel like, I feel like I'm playing Pikmin again, where I'm seeing like the funny titles they give to the treasures they find. Oh, man, what a great series. All right, so we have a white coin now. Now let's switch back to our metal detector. Speaking of which, little little plug, I did a Let's Play of the original Pikmin. Since then, I've completed Pikmin 2 and Pikmin 3. Really enjoyed them as well. Um, not as much Pikmin 2, admittedly, but... Oh, look, the metal detector is reacting to this one. Okay, can you grab that one then? Right. Now what do we have? Did any of the others cause any reaction? Nope, just this one. Here you go. Freshly picked cucumber. It's... It's a cucumber, all right. Let's use our knife and get the green coin. Lovely. So I don't really know what these coins are going to be used for just yet. I'm sure we'll find out eventually. But in the meantime, we need to go and dig underneath this mushroom, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Red spotted mushroom. I think I'll try digging here. And we'll get ourselves a silver chest. Okay, and we can combine that with our handy-dandy silver key. To find a doubly torn scrap of paper, we'll combine that for now with our other torn scrap of paper. And we are quickly making progress. I still can't quite decipher what this is relevant for just yet. Right? But, but we'll find out eventually. And... Now that we have that, um, I think the only real thing we have left to use is this lever handle on this segment here. The handle fits perfectly into the hole on the wall. Good, now try turning it. Is this going to give us our bronze key? Oh no. When I turned the handle, it got dark. It looks like the light up there went down. Maybe that light was a sort of surrogate sun. If that's the case, it didn't just get dark, it became nighttime. So the garden needs nighttime? I guess so. Or maybe there's some hidden meaning in switching from night to day. Let's go see if anything's changed now that it's dark. If we want it to be afternoon again, all we have to do is turn the handle, right? Interesting. All right, so we can take a look around and see if anything is different. At first glance, I don't see anything different here. We'll take a look at this segment. It's too dark to tell what's going on. Okay. We'll head over here. They're the same buttons. And it looks like there's something built in the rock. Okay, nothing behind the waterfall. Oh, so in the stream there might be a clue. There's a star. Hey, look at that. Are these stars? Maybe the idea was that when night falls, the stars come out. Ah, that's kind of clever. Hmm. Whoa. Oh, so we're like moving along... We got star, purple, and then a big blue star, and then a yellow star, and then green, and then red. So maybe the idea is, I mean, they seem to be matching the coin colors. The star showed up once night fell. I wonder if there's some significance to that. Once night fell. I don't know if that's 100% relevant. 
but I think what we can do... Hmm... Let me... Actually, I'll pull up my memo and I'll write down the... Oh, I can just clear this, yeah. I can write down the order, right? So it was purple... Forgive my, my mouse handwriting. And then it was blue... And then after that was... Um, it was like peak or yellow, and then green, and then red. I'll confirm this in a second. I just don't want to have to reopen this if necessary. Um, is there any immediate ordering to this that I recognize? Doesn't seem like the rainbow. So yellow, and then green, right? Hmm. Being out under the sky at night always makes me think of love. That's rather romantic of you. A boy, a girl, a sky full of stars. But there aren't any stars here. Maybe not, but we've still got the boy and the girl all alone. Come here. Hey, am I invisible? <laughs> Alice getting super jealous of Luna. That's hilarious. But also, Alice, please, you're, you, you screwed up a long time ago. Not even in consideration. All right, anything else going on here? Can we see? I want to see what happens if I use the yellow coin here. The star is yellow. The size, shape, and color are all exactly what I'd expect from a star. I guess you could say this is a typical star. I would say it's mid-sized. So far I've found one star. Huh? What? I found a bunch of stars, excuse me. This one's blue. I feel like I could just reach out and grab it. How romantic. Well, I am a woman. I'm, I feel out of the loop here. Looks like a little large for me to carry, though. So far, I've found two stars. I wonder if the size is pertinent. If so, that's probably something I should note down in my memo as well. So I guess we'll take a look at this purple one. The star is purple. It's so small and cute. So far, I've found three stars. Okay. it is a. I feel like it's a little bit silly that they're um, forcing me to go to each individual star. But it's not the end of the world. That star looks pretty green. That's a pretty small star. I'm impressed you even saw it. So far I've found four stars, okay. We'll back out again, and then we have this one. That star is definitely red. The light is right underneath it. This is a big star. So far I've found five stars. Now the question is, is there a less obvious star I should be looking for? I would not put it past the game to push me you know, to look for a star that's not going to be as apparent. Anything up there? No. Not that I immediately see. I'm also keeping an eye out for if there are any other differences, right? I don't see anything else like that. What if I look down? No. Alright, well, we'll take a look at this. It's really dark, I can barely see. Okay, so we can't really examine a lot of the individual items. It's too dark, maybe I should go somewhere else. So we have all five of those stars that were immediately visible from that little view of the stream that we got. I don't see a whole lot else visible at the moment. I'm tempted to try using the coin again. Hmm. Okay, doesn't seem to be too fruitful. So we'll head back here. Maybe there's something behind here that I'm just not aware of. Maybe that's where I need to put the coins. How many coins do we have? Four? Yeah. And it looks like there are four slots for something behind there. I don't want to brute force those combinations. I feel like it's something I should be able to deduce from clues, but for the time being I can't think of too much else. So we'll turn the light back on and maybe see if we can learn a bit more. Turning the handle back made the room bright again. The light that went down when you turned the night on came back up. So now the sun is out and it's gone from night to afternoon. Okay. And we obviously can't see the stars in the ground anymore. However, we do have this lion thing to work with. Hmm. I'm not really sure what we do with that lion there. And I don't see a whole plethora of new things to interact with. 
We never found a bronze key, which will likely hold, um, which will open up the, this box with the bronze lid, which likely is going to hold the third scrap paper here. And I don't really know what this is used for yet at the moment. I would think it's something related to the button combinations, just noting the similarity between the red circles and the, the red circular buttons. We don't know how many we need to press. If only, if each button only needs to be pressed once, then it's not too difficult to brute force. Again, I don't really want to do that. But at the moment, I don't really see many other opportunities for exploration. Hmm. Shout out to my dog, who's clearly <laughs> upset <laughs> at the lack of progress we're making in the puzzle. There's a sky, but we're indoors. I think the ceiling dome is made of a bunch of hexagonal screens. They're playing a video that looks like the sky. That means it won't even rain or get stormy or anything. Probably not, although I imagine they have some kind of system in place to water the plants. Sounds pretty boring. Hmm. Oh, wait, is that something on the ground there? Oh, it totally is. <laughs> huh? There's something next to my foot. The bronze key. Oh my goodness, can't believe I overlooked that. Okay, so now that we have that, we can open up this box, and we have the final torn piece of paper. Now we have this paper with dots. The question is... How do we interpret it? I'm fairly confident it's related to those buttons, right? Do we go from top to bottom, though, or left to right? Sorry about that interruption. Um, let's see here. So we were talking about how do we interpret the paper with dots. It's either top to bottom or, or left to right. Right? <laughs> and I guess I'm inclined to think, given the orientation of the buttons on that station, that it, we're really looking top to bottom here. So it's going to be left, right, right, left, middle, middle, right. Let's take a look. So it's left, right, r right, left. No, <laughs> Luna, stop. Middle, middle, right. There we go. Okay. The waterfall stopped. I guess that was the waterfall control panel. Okay. So now that we've done that, we can get on over here and we can see, okay, we have four slots for the coins and we have some inequality signs. The question is, what's the, you know, relative... I guess green was the smallest, right? So I can say with fair confidence, the indentations are small and circular, so we probably need something that matches the description. Do you have anything like that? Small and circular, huh? I wonder. So green is probably the smallest here. So we're gonna put that. I can say confidently that red is the, the biggest one here. And then the real question is, yellow and white, I don't remember seeing a white star. I really don't. Yellow was average size, right? So we can maybe place that here and, and put the white star here. And that might work. Maybe not, I guess. We can try, you know, reversing it a little bit. But I don't, again, I don't remember seeing a white star. The only thing I can think of is if maybe there's some sort of like, oh, it gives all the coins back. Is maybe the white star is like in the, the daytime, like the sun or something, right? Those are clouds in the background. Yeah, maybe maybe there was like a really big white star in the sky. Either way, let's let's confirm the different sizes. Again, I I very am confident that the red was the biggest and green was the smallest, but and yellow was average size. But it, you know the white star could really mix things up here. Is there a white star up there? No. Is there a white star in this portion of the stream? This is the stream that runs through the garden. When it's night, stars show up in it. Right? I don't see any on the left-hand side there. I don't see any star running over here. But that comment from Luna is actually really helpful because 
it makes me think that we're expected to only only find stars in the stream. I don't see any there, I don't see any there, and I don't see any there. Is it possible that I can find them over there? No, it's too hard to see anything when it's this dark. I don't see any white stars. And I mean, the, the stars seem pretty distinct, right? Like, it's pretty evident when there is a star. Why is this one purple though? Why are there purple and blue if we don't have corresponding coins? That's pretty cryptic in and of itself, right? So far I've found five stars. I haven't been given confirmation. Oh, I found all of the stars though, right? Which is in and of itself a little bit concerning. Here's the blue one. Blue was bigger than purple. Yellow is average. So, I mean, I know the ordering of green, yellow, and red, respective to each other. But I still don't know where this white is going to show up. So, I'm quite curious. Is it, like, underneath one of these? Underneath some of the, the wood there? I'm having a tough time seeing it. The only other thing I can maybe think of is that this sun, right, the light from the afternoon time, is the white star. Or is there a white star that shows up in the lion's face during the daytime? Right? That's the only other thing I can think of at the moment. Hmm. Anything up there? Nothing immediately, at least. Let me try looking up again. It's a little bit difficult to see all the way up, but... If I look down a little bit more, I'll get a better angle of some sort. Is it underneath that shed over there? I don't see it. Where is the white star? Or is there some combination of stars that are collectively considered the white star? You know what? Was the white star in the waterfall? That would be clever. It's really dark, I can barely see. So I guess we should go back to daytime and maybe see if we can put the white star or the stream back on. Cause yeah, I'm not, not really seeing anything else. At the moment at least. Maybe you guys have already spotted it. Maybe it's just that I'm so influenced by what these other stars look like that I'm not noticing what should otherwise be a pretty apparent white star you know like i'm looking for something very similar to what i've already found with these other stars and so i'm being so i'm not noticing what i would otherwise consider to be a white star but i don't know and i don't think so at least i would be surprised if it was like oh you just had to look up at just the right angle or something like that you know because that would seem a little bit too nitpicky almost but I mean for what it's worth not really finding much at the moment so it could be the case is it maybe like on top of the, the tree or something no yeah I don't know guys I don't know, let's go back to daytime. Stars show up at night. I can't help but feel like the white star is supposed to be the, the sun there. And can we, can we turn the stream back on? I don't need to mess with it anymore, okay. So the star was almost certainly not in the waterfall stream there. Let's go take a look at the lion. We haven't really utilized that information at all yet. 
Is there any way we can relate this to what we've seen so far? How do these tiles relate, right? I don't see a white star in here. We never figured this out, did we? Hmm. We never figured that out. And we don't have any more keys. The only thing we have are these coins, right? I mean, again, I could brute force it, right? If I know the relationship between red, yellow, and green, and I only need to place white. There are only four different combinations I would need to test, but it would be a real shame if that's what it came down to. But I don't know. I don't see any other opportunity for a white star. I feel like the only thing I can think of again is that the white coin represents like the sun, like the stars, um, and that's what we would need to work with. So I'm down to try that, meaning that the white coin would be the largest if it was like the sun in the sky. Anything? No. Interesting. So if that's not the case... Well, if maybe, maybe it's the smallest then? It looked like it was about the size of the center of that, like an inner, I guess, pentagon within the, the star itself. So maybe it's then the smallest? I don't really get that. But I can see it maybe being a line of thinking. Then... What's interesting here is I think we've already tried those four combinations, right? We tried green and then white and then yellow and then red. We also tried green and then yellow, then white and then red. And then we've tried green, yellow, red, white. So there's something different about the ordering of red, yellow, and green that I'm not picking up on. Hmm. Is it like inverted somehow? not sure I found five stars are there only five stars and then of the stars I've found green is the smallest red is the largest yellow is middle size it looks like those four coin slots are well slots for coins and they have inequality signs between them meaning the least of the coins should be on the far left I think that refers to size, but I can't, and I, I'm inclined to believe that. But is there something else I'm missing? I think I'm going to think on this one for a bit and edit to when I eventually come up with something. So at this point, the only other thing I can think of is if the coins, despite the discussion of size of the stars, are really indicating a, a sort of flow, right? that we're talking about the order we encounter the stars when moving downstream as opposed to those as opposed to doing an inequality involving size that's the only other thing i can really think of at the moment and i've also you know really scoured the, the garden and haven't been able to find a white star not in the stream anyways i've tried looking up um towards like the sky and even then I also realized that when you do look up at the sky you can't actually click on anything that's up there so it wouldn't be too great of a place to hide a white star anyways so if we are going to go by I guess like f flow of the stream um, white would probably be 
I'm not really sure. Probably up here. And then, because it's probably purple or blue. And then the next one we would encounter would be yellow, actually. So we'll go with that. And then after that would be green. And then after that would be red. No? <laughs> I guess not. I kind of wish there was an easier way to try the different combinations as opposed to having to do this each time. But maybe the f I was doing the inequality signs incorrectly. So you start with white and then go with yellow, green, red. Yellow and green and then red. Okay. So at this point, we've probably tried about a third or so of all the different possible combinations or orderings we can do. Um, I think they're only like, what, 24? Yeah, four factorial. So we've already tried a good number of them. Hmm. I'm still really confused about this. You know, what if I examine this? A white coin I found in an onion. Onion. Do you think onion is supposed to stand for like purple? Because of like red onions <laughs> having the sort of purplish skin or, or color to them? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's a bit of a stretch. Hmm. You know what? Maybe, um, maybe I have to weigh the coins and see which is heaviest and it's not related to the size of the star at all? Let's see. I can place the red one. This is a balance scale. You can use it to weigh things. It can help you tell if things that look similar have different weights. Like those four coins, for instance. Ah, yes, here we go. Drag the coins to place them on the plate. You can press the check button on the scale to compare the weights of the coins placed on it. Once you've finished weighing them, press the reset button. Okay. Oh, so we got a nice little <laughs> mini game here. So we'll start with red here. We'll go with white. So white is heavier than red. Um, I should probably pull this out in the memo. So I'm just gonna compare each coin to every other coin, right? So white is heavier than red. Um, so we'll put red here as well, green. Green is heavier than red. And we'll put yellow here as well. So everything is heavier than red. So red is gonna be on the far left, okay? And then now that we know that, we'll really just compare the remaining three. So we'll put yellow here. Um, that was a useless check. <laughs> so yellow is heavier than white. Failed. What? What? They just flew everywhere. Do you think it's broken? Let's see. Oh, I get it. If you use the scale more than five times, it triggers this spring which makes the whole thing shake. It'll do the same thing if you stop using it before you've reached five times. All oh, right, we need to pick up all the coins. Well, now I've got the coins. Are they different? Uh, are they different weights now? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. That's pretty odd. This reminds me of a Professor Layton puzzle I did. I'm curious though, if I compare red and white, I just want to check now. White is still heavier than red, okay. And green is still heavier than red, okay. And yellow is still heavier than red. Okay, so it didn't change the values of the coins, so it kind of defeats the purpose of having a limit on the number of things you can do, right? So we had done, what was it, white and yellow? And we said yellow was heavier than white. I'm just going to check again. Yep, yellow is heavier than white. And green is heavier than yellow. So yellow is heavier than white, but less than green. Okay, now it's going to get all upset. <laughs> so maybe there's a way to do this in just five moves. We'll give you two more tries to fi try and figure out the weight. If you can't manage it, we're going to have to take over. What? She's right. If you keep this up, the scale might break. 
if you start the scale game again after playing it twice, the difficulty level will be automatically changed to easy. Well, now I've got the coins. Wait a minute, so does that mean twice more or or again like right now? Well, all right, well, I mean, to be honest, I think we actually have enough information now. Um, we only needed to use it five times technically because now we have this ordering here, but that's surprising that they would do that. Okay, well, we'll head back and we can, I think, solve this. Yeah, you technically only need five times to weigh it, where you have one coin you weigh against three other coins, so you have some sort of like absolute least or whatever it may be, and then um, I guess maybe we just got lucky in that regard. But really, it seems like if you set up the inequalities based on the five things you do check, um, you should be good. So long as you have one coin you compare to all three other coins, and then those three remaining coins after that, that first one you compared to everything, if you weigh those three against each other, you should be fine. Anyways, um, green is going to be where? Green is going to be on the far right. Red is going to be on the far left. And then the remaining one is white and yellow. Okay. Oh, I don't want to do this talking. <laughs> I don't want to do this talking. Uh, they're telling us about the... What's it called? The weights and stuff. Okay. There we go. Interesting. So I wonder why the stars are relevant. What's that noise? It sounded like something unlocking. Oh. I guess it wasn't just a panel. It was actually a door. And there's a screen inside of it. It's showing nine stars. What are we supposed to do with them? Well, why don't you try touching them? Press the star buttons in the correct order. Hold up a minute, so I'm supposed to find four more stars? Um, well... <laughs> it's purple, blue, yellow, green, red. Purple, yellow... Blue, green, red. Interesting. So it told us we failed after five. Does that mean the five we input were in the incorrect order? And I think that also confirms that there are only five inputs to have. So there aren't actually nine stars, even though they're shown here. So this is probably where we go by size, potentially. So let's let's go largest to smallest. That would be red, blue, yellow, purple, green. Nice. Completed. Heh, <laughs> thought so. You did it! Hey, check out the screen. Oh, and it's blue. Huh. Wait, this is the safe password. You have found a safe password. To view it, navigate to the pass tab in the archive. So again, this is one thing that was confusing before. I don't know if this is an escape password or a hidden file password. I'm tempted to think it's a hidden file password because the previous blue ones were hidden file passwords, but I don't know that 100% at the moment. I kind of wish they would just say it's a hidden file password or an escape password. But regardless, um, it seems like now we can use a different ordering of the stars maybe to get the opposite. So let's let's do the opposite direction where we instead do green, purple, and then yellow, blue, red. Interesting. So, so we need to activate this again in a specific order in order to, hmm. What if I did the coin colors, right? So it was red, white, yellow, green? No. So when this, when I hit that, it turns blue. When I hit this one, it also stays blue. This one, okay, so that's not relevant. Um, so the question is now, now what? <laughs> so for the passwords, Again, this one on the right makes me think that that's the hidden file password. 
There's clearly still information we don't have, though. Ugh. I can't figure it out. You can do it. Thanks. I, I appreciate your confidence, but there's still something we haven't really figured out, right? There's that lion mosaic here, and then there's the... I don't know, the, the key with the saying. Do we have our metal detector anymore? No, we have zero items. Hmm. Is it a specific tile that we're supposed to touch? That's kind of what it makes me think of, but I thought maybe we'd be able to use the metal detector on one of the tiles. Huh, this tile doesn't work, this tile, none of the... No, oh, some of them do. Is there something we're supposed to do with this? I guess I should also try to be extra observant to make sure there's no item I'm missing because we have, in the past, <laughs> overlooked at a very important item, right? Like that bronze key before. So is there something else in the stream that I can maybe interact with? It doesn't look like it. But there's got to be some way to get another item. If there's a key that we can put in that area here, then what, right? Hmm. Tufli, Ego, Eris. Or Eris. There's got to be more to find here, right? Is there something on the ground that I'm missing? Is there an area I haven't explored? I don't think so. We've used... We have have very much used up all of the items we currently have. Is there anything on the ground in this area that I overlooked? I don't think they'd be too crazy about obscuring certain items. There is potentially this little jutted out area here that we haven't really visited, have we? But it's not really giving us much of an option to do so anyways. Hmm. So eventually we're going to need to get another ordering of those stars. What would that be though? Let's take a look around and maybe in the stream to see if there's anything we can pick up. Nothing under the plant or that plant. Are there any other potted plants? Because they gave a hint. Ah, oh, what did Luna say? We can't scroll through text, can we? No, we can't. Is there anywhere else I can dig? No, I mean, I don't even have the shovel anymore, right? It was like she mentioned on shelves or alcoves or under potted plants and so forth. Is there something else in here that I can maybe interact with? There's still a lot of onions. If we start digging any deeper, our clothes are going to get dirty. That's okay. If you get dirty, you can just wash your clothes in the stream. Are, are you trying to get me to take my clothes off? Oh, Sigma. There are a lot of cucumbers here. Anything I'm missing? I don't really see anything. What should we do with the rest of this tomato? Well, we can't really plant it, and it doesn't seem fair to eat it without telling the others. I guess we can just leave it here, then. I think that would be best. We can always come back and eat them if we can't find anything else. That's pretty funny. Anything in the dirt? No, I don't think so. Maybe something with the pepper? Something? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Hmm. Alright, well maybe this will be another... Pause and, and edit when I eventually come up with something. But for the time being, I feel like we need to find a key that has just eluded my <laughs> my vision for quite some time. Is there anything else we can glean from this? We've already gathered all the boxes on the map, right? Yes, this just shows where they are, so I don't think we have any further use for it. Okay. Straightforward enough. Anything on the ground here next to the stream? No? I don't think so. Anything to do with this bench? Can we sit on it now that it's maybe not wet? 
spray from the waterfall makes it wet. Okay. Anything underneath it on the backboard? No, I don't really see anything. I really don't. Hmm, I'm at a bit of a loss, guys. Look, Luna, it's Sigma's house. Is that true, Sigma? Is this shed your house? You must be going through a rough time. <laughs> of course, playing games with Sigma. Appreciate the banter. What if I try the order that the stars appear in the screen, or in the stream? So it starts with purple, and then blue, and then yellow, green, red. Oh, so that's the other order. Great. Awesome. Solved it. Good work. Look at the screen. Alright, so this is the green passcode. Well, what's going on? The screen's changed. You found a safe password. So we found both passwords. I still don't know what's in that little tomb thing that says to free Ego Iris. Uh, so I'm a little bit surprised that that never really came into play. I'm not a huge fan of red herrings, but maybe it'll be relevant after we solve the puzzle. So let's go ahead and do this. I, oh, actually I should probably save. The safe is closed tight. I'm gonna save. Uh, you guys can see the life of a YouTuber. <laughs> If you want to create separate save files between every single um, episode so you don't mess things up. But, alright, let's 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 try the blue password. I don't remember exactly what it was. Okay, so it was moons and then that sun. So, oops. Moon, moon, sun. And I think the blue is going to be the hidden file here. Lovely. Yes, it opened. You did it. Good job, Sigma. You found a gold file. Lovely. So now we can back out, and then we can do the final password for the um, the green one. So let's go to the password, be garden, and then it's just stars. Okay. So star, star, and star. There we go. All right. So that was that was a pretty cool one. A um, couple red herrings that <laughs> threw me for a little bit of a loop, but. It all, it all came together in the end. Whoa, it opened again. Is there something inside? I believe so. There's a lot of stuff in here. Let's have a look at it then. First off, this looks like a map. Okay, why the arrows though? On the upper left it says floor B. The map we found in the crew quarters said floor A. So A is the top floor and B is the bottom floor. I mean, I know we took the elevator down to get here, so right. Let's keep going. There are more things in the safe. This is the key card. Oh boy, another Ambidex room. It has a moon on it. That means, yeah, this is the moon card that the announcement was talking about. There's two of them in here, just like with the sun card. You should take one, Alice. Why? Well, you're a solo. Luna and I'll take one and you take the other one. Right, thanks. So, what have we got next? It looks like a piece of paper. What is this? Nevada test site, and then rhizome 9, some kind of diagram. Is it a flowchart? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I wonder what it is, and why are the letters out of order? They're different points, different junctures. Yeah, I would bet that this is sort of like a puzzle. You can see the different arrows leading to different directions, likely different outcomes, right? And D, E, A, B, and C are different junctures that can either be connected or diverted in whatever particular direction. Hmm, interesting. It seems like a nice little, almost like, uh, those puzzles where you have to rotate the pipes to get the water to flow in a particular place. Oh well, just forget about it for now. We can always come back to it later. There's two more things in here. What's this? Ig equals immunoglobulin. <laughs> Looks like a note. It says Ig equals immunoglobulin. You mean it doesn't stand for Instagram? <laughs> What's immunoglobulin? It's another word for an antibody. You mean like the thing in your body that fights off bacteria and viruses and stuff? Yes. So what is this supposed to tell us? Honestly, I have no idea. The only thing left is this key. That must be the key to the exit. Yes, I think you're right. We should be able to use it to open the door. 
Okay. Awesome. What are we waiting for? I don't know, man. What are we waiting for? Because I think we are ready to break out of here. This has the lock on it, so it's probably the lock for this door. All right, let's open this door. Yes, let's. Please do. Everybody's all happy now that we think we're getting out. Here we go. Three, two, one. You found it. All right. Good work, guys. We did it. Made it out. What are we going to find when we get out is the real question, right? And, uh, of course, as you guys might expect, we're going to answer that question in the next episode. That was, that was a pretty good puzzle. Overall, I enjoyed it. I liked the environment. Uh, some, some pretty neat colors, stars, you know, weighing things. It reminded me of a couple puzzles I've done in other games as well. So, that was good stuff. I'm really curious to figure out what's going on with that stuff we found in the safe, right? That looked like a timeline we could alter at certain, you know, decision points to affect the flow of our, our characters, where they end up going, what outcome they reach. And immunoglobulin, right? Like, I'm not sure why that's pertinent unless it's referring to some way their bodies are being altered uh, to allow for time travel or, or whatever it may be. I don't really know, but um, we'll hopefully get one step closer to understanding in the next episode. But until the next episode, Zoom Night Zero, and this mission is complete.